Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another Capture One tutorial. And today we're going to talk about modification of location for session folders. So as you know, when we create a session, it will create these four folders in a folder for us. So let's take a look at that. So here I have the output folder. So if I go back one step, you can see that we have the four folders. And these are backups of uh, previous versions of Capture One. Every time a new version comes out, it creates a backup. I don't long, I no longer need those. Remember that the database doesn't contain the changes to each image. Those are actually stored in little uh, settings files in here. Again, there's another one for another version of Capture One. But in here, there's a settings file for each one. And if you create a mask, there's actually a mask file in here as well. So that's where Capture One keeps all that. And I have a whole video that I covered all that in. Um, but what I want to talk about is modification of these. Uh, so for example, we have the output folder here and the output folder here. And these, of course, line up. But uh, let's say, for example, that um, I want to play with this like I do Lightroom, in which it dumps everything into the same folder. So there's a couple ways to do that. One is inside of Capture One, I can go to the Capture folder and I can say this is also the Selects folder and this is also the Output folder. So now you see that all three of these are pointing to the Capture folder. So if I switch to the Capture folder, Select folder, a Location folder, you notice none of this changes because all these are now pointing to the same place. So this works very much like Lightroom in that everything is one big happy giant pile of files and then you have to back everything up because you can't differentiate between what you're keeping and what you're not keeping because the pick, uh, that you, the pick flag that you used in Lightroom is not obvious to the operating system uh, without doing some fancy work. Uh, so, so that's not really conducive to doing some things. However, uh, to change these back opens up kind of a little bit of a Pandora's box into some cool stuff you can do. So you right click, go to Capture One and say uh, set as output. Same here, go to selects, same, same set of selects folder. And you can see it, it changed in the background. I'm going to change that. And then trash, we did not change. So what this kind of shows us is that we can do some fun things here. So let me demonstrate. Uh, but uh, before I do that, I want to show you uh, favorites because favorites are also cool. So here's Lenaria, who's just amazing to work with. And I want to use parts of a session I worked with her before uh, because I like the color toning of one of the images. And I wanted to borrow that for one of these images, at least that's my hypothetical situation. So what I want to do is I want to add a favorites folder here. So I click on the plus sign. I go and find the other session that I would like to use as a favorite. Then I pick which folder I would like. So I'm gonna go with the output folder here and it adds it here. So if I click there, I can now see this image, which is the one I was looking for. I can go up and I can see the color settings that I have for this one. So if we work with high school seniors, for example, and you work with them across multiple days, then you can use this to help you get to those other sessions to reference those. And you can, of course, add as many as you would like. And you can also redirect where these point. And I actually have a Capture One project that's blank, meaning it doesn't contain anything. And all I do is redirect my selects and output folders if I wanted to use a process recipe, for example, one of these to export to um, my portfolio, for example, with a watermark across it, um, because if I click on this, my watermark will appear, assuming that I have it on right there, and I can move it around and say I wanted to use an image that's an older image and it, I didn't have it in Capture One, it was still back in Lightroom, or I had to maintain multiple copies, um, and I wanted to use this one, then I can go ahead and process this and kick it out to my portfolio without having to create a new session and then go and deal with it. So I didn't upset the apple cart with my current, I just used one of these. Now, just like using Bridge, I can go and find files elsewhere on my hard drive and not have to actually add them as session favorites if I just wanted to borrow something quickly. And you can do that by just actually going down here and looking through your folders. Uh, let's say, for example, I wanna find this in my library, just say show in library, and it will show it to you on your hard drive. It's not changing the location of anything, it's just showing you just like Bridge would, and then I can go and actually find this day here and say, I just wanted to look at this output folder real fast. Now you see that this one, this is the actual session because you see it as these icons next to it. And if I wanted to move something from this capture folder into a selects folder down here, then I could mark this one as my selects folder. And now when I move it, 
to select, meaning using this icon here to pick, pick up and move the file, it'll actually move it to that other sessions folder system. Uh, so it's pretty interesting that you can mix and match uh, your sessions in this way, because again, they're just hard drives. The databases that are stored on those are based on the physical files that you see in those directories. So this opens up a lot of really kind of cool capabilities inside of the system. So that was just a quick tour of how you can manipulate the session locations temporarily or permanently, depending on your preference, mixing and matching folders across different sessions, and then borrowing images or redirecting the flow of images to other sessions. So there's a lot of things in here you can do. This is not meant to complicate your life because by default, you don't have to do any of this. But to let you know that there are other options out there, if you wanted to view things, you don't have to open and close sessions all day long. If you're simply looking to borrow a file or settings from a file, you don't need to go and open and close sessions to get that done. So if you like this video, please click the like button below. I really appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber already, I appreciate the subscription and I will catch you next time. Everybody stay safe.